Well, good morning, my friends, and today we're going to the book of Lamentations. Lamentations was written by Jeremiah, probably when he was in Egypt. You know, he was forcefully taken from the land of Judah against his will and against God's will, but he was forcefully taken to Egypt. And uh, this is a perspective of, of what he saw in Jerusalem and why he is lamenting over Jerusalem. And so, uh, and over over Judah. So when we look at this book, uh, we must realize uh, that um, Jeremiah he's weeping, he's lamenting, and and there are five chapters, twenty two verses uh, in each chapter except chapter three. Chapter three is three times twenty two, which is sixty six, and the twenty two uh, is comp uh, pairing with the number of letters in the uh, Hebrew alphabet. And so uh, when we look at this and we read this, we must understand it's kind of a poetry and, and a weeping uh, that Jeremiah is going through. I just want to begin reading a few uh, verses here, and then we're going to end up on uh, a verse of hope. But I just want to show you what Jeremiah was seeing there in the siege. And this is such a tragic thing. But let me start with verse number one. Uh, of lamentation uh, in uh, how lonely sits the city that was full of people. How like a widow has she become, she who was great among the nations, she who was a princess among the provinces has become a slave. I just kind of think, when I was thinking about how important Jerusalem was, what, what is the most, uh, probably the major city in America? It would most likely be New York City. Can you imagine that if something like this were to happen, and, and this would be said of New York City, because it, it is the the uh, 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 you know the the population, many people, it's the hub of so many trade and so so much trade and so on. So I just want you to kind of fig, uh, picture this as um, what they are going through with. <clears throat> verse chapter two, verse number eleven and twelve. Let me read this. Uh, verse 11, my eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out to the ground because of the destruction of the daughter of my people, because infants and babies faint in the streets of the cities. What a tragedy here. Verse 12, they cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine as they faint like a wounded man in the streets of the city as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. Then verse number 21, in the dust of the streets lie the young and the old. My young women and my young men have fallen by the sword. You have killed them in the days of your anger, slaughtering without pity. And so we go over chapter number four, verse four, I'm just showing you here, especially our focus is on the young and that would make anybody cry. Anybody weep when you saw the young and the, and the babies uh, that were being killed and how they had nothing. Look, in verse number four of chapter four, the tongue of the nursing infant sticks to the roof of its mouth for thirst. The children beg for food, but no one gives it to them. Verse number 10, the hands of compassionate women have boiled their own children. They became their food during the destruction of the daughter of my people. My, how low can you get that people would, that mothers would start boiling and eating their own children what a tragedy. That's enough to make anyone weep. Let's go over to chapter number five, verses 11 to 13. Women are raped in Zion, young women in the towns of Judah. Princes are hung up by their hands. No respect is shown to the elders. Young men are compelled to grind at the mill and boys stagger under loads of wood. So all of these, uh, these are just examples of what Jeremiah saw that took place there in Jerusalem before he left. And so his heart is, is just being poured out. He's just having compassion on them. Just kind of reminds me of in the New Testament when Jesus looked over Jerusalem and he wept and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to wrap you uh, under my wings like a, like a mother chicken with her hands. I wanted to cover you. I wanted to help you, but you wouldn't let me. Well, Jeremiah is also weeping here because of what has taken place. But I want to end with chapter 3, verse 22 to 26. <clears throat> Here's some hope, 22 to 26. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope 
in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good to, that, the, that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I want to say, my friends, if we'll wait on the Lord, if we'll continue to trust in him, no matter what we go through with, God is good, he is merciful, and if we'll just learn to wait on him, eventually we will see victory, we'll see, and, and Jeremiah was the same way, he knew, he knew that there was coming a day of restoration, but uh, he just had to wait. Uh, it was hard as he was going through this waiting period, but he had to wait. And I encourage you, my friends, you're, whatever you're going through with today, if you will continue to trust in the Lord, uh, if it's hard. It's hard to wait because we want to do something. We want to make something happen. But if you will learn to wait on the Lord, he will come through for you and help you. Father, I pray for our people today, those that are watching. God, I again, we, we just uh, don't know what everyone's going through with, but Lord, we know your word is true was true for Jeremiah, and it's true for us today, that we can learn to wait on you, and you will bring us through. I pray, God, you'll prepare the way for each of us today, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.